Going into the house with a clock in its walls, I was a little hesitant, but throughout the movie, I found myself enjoying it quite a bit. What is going on guys? How's it going? Today I am here to review the upcoming film, The House with a Clock in Its Walls. The House with a Clock in Its Walls is directed by Eli Roth and tells the story of a young boy, Louis Barneveld, who goes off to go live with his uncle, Jonathan Barneveld, in his creepy old house, which is haunted by its original owner's ghost, who before he died, put a hidden clock within the walls of the house. I'm going to start out by saying this, I had a lot of fun watching The House with the Clock in Its Walls, and it's a great movie. I highly recommend it to anybody who's watching this. The story, I thought, was fantastic. It's got this very magical and very adventurous story. It was very well drawn out, it was very intriguing, and it was a very investing film. The three main characters in this movie were really great. Jack Black's character, Jonathan Barnevelt, is kind of like an enigma in this movie. He's this very strange man, and at times, you don't really know what he might end up doing. He's very he's a very tricky man to be deciphered by the other characters in the movie. And Jack Black is always a delight to watch on screen, most recently with his film Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle. He was a lot of fun to watch in that movie, and even in this movie. Um, I find my, I found myself enjoying his performance and his character quite a bit in this movie. Mrs. Zimmerman is played by Kate Blanchett, who is very similar to uh, Jack Black's character. She's kind of like an enigma. There are things you don't know about her that you feel like you should know. And similar to Jack Black, she did an excellent job in her role uh, with this movie. There was also quite a lot of back and forth between Jack Black's character and Kate Blanchett's character, which created some really great comedy. That was definitely one of the highlights for me. And the character of Louis Barnevelt was such a great character. There were many moments throughout this movie where it felt like I was in the skin of Louis, where I was feeling the various emotions and feelings that he was feeling on screen, you know, during certain times and moments. Most notably, uh, I felt these emotions in scenes where he was hanging out with his friend Tarby, played by Sonny Soljic. Those scenes poured out lots of feelings, lots of emotional feelings, lo lots of exciting feelings from out of the screen right at me. The character of Lewis, the character of Lewis was very well written, and the acting from Owen Vaccaro, I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce his name, was superb. One of the better child performances from recent memory. And the cinematography in this movie was great. The way certain shots looked and the way scenes looked really brought out that creepiness feel to the movie. And, I, and again, I thought it was uh, really well done. And similar to the cinematography, the score also really brought out that uh, creepiness tone too. And again, I thought that the score was also really good. Now, my flaws with the movie. Besides the three main characters, its supporting characters were not very well written and not very well introduced. Uh, I, I'd have to say. With the villain, we got reasons for why he did the things he did and why he put the clock in the walls of the house, which is, you know, in my mind, essential to creating a good villain, but besides that, the villain in this movie was pretty disposable. Um, you kind of just wanted him gone immediately. I didn't want anything else to do with him. Um, he, he, he could just leave. That's honestly the extent of the characterization we got from its supporting characters. Its supporting characters aren't very well written and things happen that you're like, what? How? How did this come to be? Um, so, I, so I had a problem with that. And the other flaw I had is that there were many scenes that were uh, exposition based. Now I get it's basically essential that you have exposition in your movie to keep the story flowing. But with this movie, I felt like there was too much. Like every ten minutes, we were getting new information and we were being told new background information on something else. And I, I felt very overwhelmed with the amount of exposition that were that we were getting. It was. It, if there was less of it, it would have been a lot better. And with the abundance of the exposition-based scenes, it did lead to uh, some scenes dragging here and there, creating a few pacing issues for me. But other than that, I had a lot of fun watching The House with the Clock in Its Walls. I'm really looking forward to watching The House with the Clock in Its Walls again. It's a fun, magical adventure, and I highly recommend it to anybody who's watching. I'm going to give The House with the Clock in Its Walls 8 out of 10. So there you guys go. That was my review for The House with a Clock in Its Walls. Um, and yeah, I'm back doing movie reviews. I've been thinking about doing uh, movie reviews for quite a while, ever since I got Movie Pass at the beginning of the year. Um, I actually got... Um, I was given tickets to go to a press screening of this movie, which I saw yesterday. So I was able to see the movie um, a couple days early. It comes out this Friday, uh, two days from now, from when I'm recording this video. Um, and that was my first advanced screening I went to, and again, it was a lot of fun. Uh, very interesting experience. Uh, yeah, again, I'm back doing movie reviews. Hopefully I can 
uh, go to more press screenings for you guys, get early reviews out for you guys. Um, so yeah, anyways guys, that was my review for the house with the clock in its walls. Be on the lookout for more videos coming soon, and I will see you guys next time.